Hello and welcome to the skating lesson. I'm Dave Lees. And I'm Jonathan Beyer. Hi, Dave. And now I feel like I'm supposed to comment on your sweater every time. And this is, like all the others, a delightful sweater. You like it? It's okay? It's lovely. You know what? It reminds me of, because one person said it on YouTube, so now I'm obliged. I have a black and gray piece of pottery that kind of matches. <laughs> So I look like a piece of pottery. The great. Yeah, uh, Art Deco ceramic. That's it's a it's high praise in my book. Okay. You know I love a stripe and a black situation. Uh, yeah. yeah. Why not? Delightful. Delightful. Well, this is this and that. We'll be discussing so much going on in the skating world. We're going to be talking about the Sheffield Grand Prix. What's going on in Graz? What's going on at Sectionals? What is going on in Russia? So if you are new here, please subscribe below and remember to smash that like button. We'll probably discuss maybe more themes this week than just every little thing because it is yeah. um, a very dense uh, thing. Also, the update on Terry and Shevetsky. Jonathan, I've been I've had the craziest like two weeks of my life, three two three weeks of my life, but in a much better place. But I I was so busy. But I do know that last week I did tell you. The Diana and Gleb were never going to go to Russia. Yes, correct. And they, they were, were going to have to do damage control and all of this. There were comments on Sports Rue calling me a genius and not just a jealous F word American, right? Like, I <laughs> class. Yeah, okay. <laughs> you know what, Jonathan? You can't take the, you can't believe the, the accolades and you can't believe the negativity. You just yeah. have to do you. And <laughs> I end up believing both. That's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> there it is uh, they just i think people are seeing clearly there's also shevetsky article i'm finally going to do the as the blade turns this week as long as the end of the skating video we've got cleaned house and figured things out anyway uh lots been going on so yeah um where to start i mean at the very beginning of the week let's talk about sectionals but before we go into just um skaters there was a big situation at sectionals this week and because you, you have been completed, you live for sectionals like it's my favorite event of the year sectionals is dave's jam i cannot say that i feel the same so give me spill it spill that tea what i happened? love sectionals um sofas no <laughs> i think that there is a purity to watching people on the journey of achieving their dreams before they've made it to the top, when they're still loving skating and fighting like hell to make it there, right? Yeah. And you know that you have to get a certain place to qualify. It brings it back to the thrill of victory and the agony of defeat in the way that you don't see on the Grand Prix when someone has a bye to nationals like Brady Tunnell when they shouldn't be competing. When it's right. all on the line, there's something so satisfying about watching it. I mean, the intensity, the up and comers, the hot messes, the... Uh, you will see more unique skating because the levels are different, right? right? You will see um, like has-beens or comebacks and every, it's just fascinating human behavior in sport. It is really, and I think if you've competed at a sectionals, even in the like, adult, like it is, I find it harder, you know, it is harder than nationals in some ways because you're more peaked and prepared for nationals having done sectionals. So you're not fully amped and peaked yet, right? right? You're still on that place and you have to get there. And it is tougher, yeah, in some ways. Well, because I think for many people to make nationals is the goal. So almost <laughs> once you get to nationals, the goal has been achieved. And yet at sectionals, they're very clearly fighting for something specific, yeah. Yeah. Now it started, so at the lower levels of pairs and dance, if you are competing up through novice, this is your biggest competition of the year. This is actually your nationals and it's called the U.S. dance final and the U.S. pairs final. Okay. Now, of course, so I train with a novice dance team, Emily Brenzi and William Lasur, who this was like their nationals, they teamed together. Like 
I, I felt like paternal feelings. I don't, like Jonathan, like I felt like, because we skated together every day since they've teamed up, you know, yeah. like. Of course, <laughs> it's different like, when you know the people always, yeah. Well, not everyone knows that I'm like a big sap. Like people, I don't know that everyone like knows right. this, right? <laughs> Well, there's now an expectation in place. But yeah, at the early stages, it's quite like charming to be rooting for all these people. And so Igor and Kristen like cleaned up at the US dance final. Nice. Like, they, were beating, they were beating Kilyakov, they were beating Spielbahn. So like they went one, three, something else in um in novice, and then in juvenile, they went two, three, five. So they have like tons of things. If you go back, I would watch the novice final and Sylvia and Rowan won and they've won at like every level coming up. So they're worth watching. Emily and William are worth watching. Um, Adrian Carhart's sister won in juvenile. She has a bit of an older partner. It's a little bit of a hush hush buzzed now, about. Where are you watching section? US fan zone for ah, novice. Board. That is carried no problem, even after the fact. Even after the fact. This is so dumb. I don't know why they put the juniors on Peacock. I, I, I don't understand. What does Peacock care about sectionals? I get having right. content for subscribers, but for senior, I could kind of see it. But for the rest, I don't really understand like wh yeah. what has happened why especially if you can't go back and rewatch yeah so a bunch of the ice house kids all made it through and the weird so ever since these new rules now if in singles if you're in the top two in novice you get to compete at the nationals in junior ah okay so sasha fegan was second in novice he will get to go compete in junior okay. um against kirk Aghetto, um against Lucius who they all skate with he finished second ahead of Kirk Kirk was third uh, Robert Yampolsky who had a bye competed at sectionals because he is going to the junior grand prix final and didn't have a competition because the junior grand prix is so early and all of this so it's just been like a really interesting kind of competition to watch and then Mia Bargo was finishing behind Katie Kravchik like at many of the competitions and it flipped here and Mia won and this is an interesting scenario because she takes from Julia and Nina and, and Roman does her jumps. And she has a sister who is in the Nutcracker at Lincoln Center. So they have a daughter who's a sectional figure skating champion and a daughter who's in the ballet. This is a family that I'm interested in, Jonathan. Right? I mean, yeah, it's my right. bougie dream, all right? Yeah. Like, yeah. can we like, <laughs> I don't know, go to Broadway together? Like, let's do it, all right? Yeah. Like, this yeah. is my kind of people. Amazing. Okay. Maybe they could have a brother who's an opera singer. And we round it out. That's the only missing piece. Yeah. <laughs> be a classic pianist? Yes. Yes. Pianist, be honest. Pianist. <laughs> you are a real pianist, Jonathan. I've always said that about you. You know, I. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh, you. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, but there was a scandal at sectionals. Have you read about this? No. Okay. So in, this is, was a rule in Canada that it wasn't, okay. When, once the competition starts in the US. Oh, of course I heard about this. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. You are not allowed to practice on another rink. One of the competitors did this. Now, granted, do I think any kid is going on the ice by themselves at a competition? No. Right. That becomes, did the coach. Now, is the coach trying to skirt the rules or did the coach not, like, not know? Because a lot of, and it was a Russian coach and a lot of the Russian coaches, they don't know any of the moves in the field, like, which are the tests that you have to take. They are like, think that they're above it and they make you go to someone else to learn the moves in the field, right? The, the skater was on the other ice, skated their program, and it had been reported that they had extra practice time than other people, and they were disqualified from the event. Because I saw the response to it, where the skater was saying, like, this was just a rink, we thought we could practice there, I wish someone would have told us to stop instead of just not saying anything and then telling us. You no, know, apparently, 
uh, you know, there are, of course, a million versions of this story going around, whether a competitor's parent was told who reported, like, I mean, look, this happened at the adult sectionals as well, years ago. And I always wonder, like, I think competition and nerves brings out either the best or the worst in people, right? Or just the nervousness in people. So if you think about it, like, at a certain point, you're not gonna like relearn your jump if you get 10 more minutes of practice time or- Well, that's the thing, yeah. Before the event, it's too late. Like, right. it shouldn't be in the program if you're not right. doing it. So I, yeah, it's, I don't know. And obviously this skater skated very well. So they probably didn't need the practice time. Right. But the rule is the rule and everyone knows the rule. So uh, it's very unfortunate. It's also novice ladies, like they would have gotten to compete junior at nationals. Now they don't, but I mean, yeah, it's unfortunate, but it, it is a rule. Like it is. Yeah. It's the rule. Unfortunately, this person now becomes branded by it almost, right? Like they're always going to be known in skating as like that skater That's who did this. But I right. do hope that people put it in context that it, obviously it's the coach who is driving that bus or right. a parent or something, you know? Like, what? Or unknowingly, yeah. Knowing or unknowing. So yeah, who knows, but people will. You know what? But I mean, that even goes back you to- You know what I want to say to this skater though? They were obviously very good because they skated well. And when you're known like that, use it to your advantage. Right. People are gonna pay more attention to you because yeah. you're that skater. They're watching that much more closely. Yeah. Yes. You just became that much more interesting to me. Frankly, I didn't know who the heck you were a week ago. And now we do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, your, your thing about sort of um, international coaches at times, I mean, it even reminds me of Raphael in Skate Canada, where he's just like wandering around, just getting in steps around the arena and then accidentally went in the the forbidden zone of COVID protocol, and then he's not allowed to re-enter the thing and coach Nathan for the event and all that sort of stuff. And you know, he was like, what, what? Why didn't you tell me not to go there? You know, I, I, I don't know that it's always malicious as much as it's... There's also uh, certain cultures, and Russia is one of them, where boundary pushing is the thing. Right. If you're not pushing the boundaries, you're getting stepped on and are seen as stupid for not taking those advantages. In the US, we're all about rules and how dare you and holier than, right? Mm -hmm. There, it's like bribe your way to the top, you know? Yeah. Whatever you have to do at the hospital to get your passport, whatever. So it's like a little bit of a different cultural yeah. story. Yeah. yeah. So, uh -huh. on, so yeah. that was sectionals. <laughs> sectionals, and you know what? It made it one of the best weeks. Also, Millie Murdoch did really well. And finally, people have told this girl for years that she should do pairs. And it seems like she's going to try out with Balazs. Oh, nice. Ed, but like his potential tryouts are all the old MJM girls. Oh. Glassenberg is looking for a partner. Gabby Izzo is potentially on the pair market. She was at uh, the Grand Prix this week. Yeah. Millie, it's like, wait, you're all the girls from the method? You're just like picking them? Let's get the girl from Cyprus in there. And right. why don't <laughs> So Balazs is going to be American again and okay. do pair the American guy. He is going to have American citizenship again. This is ridiculous. Okay. okay. He, right. But yeah, this is someone who was one of the top pair boys. And if you've seen the pair discipline this season, it needs help, Jonathan. Yeah. I cannot imagine. So much so that Danny O'Shea has a new partner who's 15 years younger, 14 years younger, 15. Mm -hmm. I never was a mathematician, but uh, before they ever competed at a sectionals, at anything, they already got an international assignment with throw doubles. Like, and one. Yeah. What is happening to the pair discipline? It's, it's, in, it's in real dire straits. It's in real dire straits. And, um, Again, it's one of my favorite disciplines. I don't know where this went awry. I don't know if we had Sandra on or whoever it was that was saying IJS actually hit pairs the hardest. 
She's like, you're yeah. talking about the lack of creativity and all this sort of stuff. She's like, IJS like stunted the growth of pears. Um, yeah. But we had such an embarrassment of riches in the past two Olympics with the pears fields. And now, especially, I know, you know, whatever the emotional connotation behind it, without Russian pears at the moment and without any Chinese pears, this is looking bleak. And it's not that the junior crop is coming up and we just have to be patient. We even see in the junior ranks, it's a discipline in trouble. Yeah, and we don't have some of the Italian pairs, right? We also, it's, it's to the point where you're like, oh, those Italian roller skaters, if only they could put on ice skates, you know? Right? Just... <laughs> yeah, they would round out their, their field. <laughs> it's a, Luca Lucaroni who just uh, finished his career with you know two gold medals. I mean, it's just really rough. Although it was my understanding Matteo Guarize has a new partner, but we have not seen that. Not seen it yet. But again, you see these new pairs. It takes time. I, pairs is extra challenging. I think it's going to take till the Olympics to really build up that discipline. Yeah. yeah. So I do, but I think for someone like Amelia Murdoch, you're looking at are you going to be a skater who competes for another country or should you do pairs? Right. And my personal opinion in that situation is you could be a skater from another country. Russia, likely not coming back next year. Which right. means those skaters can start going to other countries. Whether the Russian Federation wants it or not, like they can start splintering off, especially ones that are less high level ranked, you know, skaters, less involved in the propaganda, not a Trusova, not a Volyeva, right? right. So you can say, Annabelle will probably go to France, Diana will go to the US. What's going to happen? Some of these skaters are going to start doing Azerbaijan, this country, that country, whatever, Georgia. You're always going to be fighting to get to that Grand Prix, to those senior Bs. But in this field, if you're a good single skater, but you're not going to be the one who's going to make it in the top three, you could go and make it in pairs probably pretty easily. No, well, and I don't understand, like, I know that, like, there's some some view, that stigma of, like, I couldn't cut it here, so I went there. Those Olympic medals still count. Those Grand Prix medals still count. Those national champions are still national. Let's talk about Deanna Stilato, because Jenny also could have gone to pairs, and I believe would have been even more successful in pairs. I believe that also. She was perfect for it. But yeah. it was the stigma that it was less than. I think she was perfect for it. And I think she would have done really well. Yeah. And it's more, maybe more interesting having a partner and doing that. Look at Deanna Stellato. Yes, yeah, she was a great single skater, but she's great a pair phenomenal pair skater. Yeah. And will be remembered more. It's almost like when someone makes it in pairs at the top, they become almost a bigger star because they can compete longer. They can have more of an impact. They're older, they're more interesting. Yeah. They develop their skating. It's just nicer to watch. So I would rather watch Alexa and Brandon, Deanna and Maxime than watch an Isabeau. I don't know, seeing a girl fight puberty, any girl, fight pu like fighting puberty and trying to get as many rotations, but not really having an interesting developed program, I find pairs more interesting in that sense. Yeah, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. And again, I, it will not, because of when we really got into skating with mm -hmm. such a goofy time and ice stands, <laughs> the fact that it is this like roaring giant of all the disciplines is, I'll still never get used to it, that pairs is so lagging behind. Because to me, pairs has every, I love ice stands, but Paris has all of these big ticket elements and these exciting things. And I miss it. I miss I miss the depth of this discipline for sure. I know, is it gonna be replaced by solo dance now that it's going international? They're adding championship solo dance to adult nationals. Oh, amazing. Do I need to like take my dance test like this quickly? Like, I don't know. I, I don't know how much time we have, right? This Paulina is... will let us know she already has her dance tests. So Paulina it's... Edmonds did pass all of her dance tests and she also learned correct technique from Sasha Fedeyev in Chicago, okay? Yeah. She learned <laughs> a, a flip has an inside edge and a Lutz has an outside edge and Paulina Edmonds did learn this in addition to all of her dance tests. Perfect. Yes. 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> and I've seen her twizzles and you know what? They're lovely. Go you, Paulina. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and her, her uh, podcast is sponsored by gambling and <laughs> what else? It's a couple other ridiculous things. I but what it. I like about it is it allows you, you know, as opposed to some things you have to watch the ad or listen to the ad, you are able to fast forward past her doing the plug. I've heard. Why would you want to? Oh, instead, because once you've heard it once, I've like, I've got it. She's going to do her like hockey gambling, whatever that is. It cracks me up every time. Right? Yeah. Like yeah. pot gummies and gambling. No, I forget what the other one is, but people will remember. Uh, okay. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, bringing it back to the Paris, like I have to be honest, at the Grand Prix, I only watched Alexa and Brandon. Yeah. Especially when I, ones. when I saw those scores, you know what I mean? You're, you're talking 20 points behind is silver. And then even more, you know, and then another 20 behind is, is bronze. And you're like, this is, this is the opportunity for some people to always be remembered as these sorts of medalists. Alexa is a twice Grand Prix champion this season, you know? Doing the most. And frankly, now we love Alexa. Very much so. They don't look like they're on all cylinders yet. Right? Like, can right. We I think they're biding their time, and clearly it's proven not to be holding them back in the placement. I think that we're, I think that we will see them start to look stronger nationals or continents, Olympics. Yeah. I just keep thinking, like, huh. Because in the past, when you win a Grand Prix, some years the US OPC matches that prize money mm. and maybe your federation does, or there are different like bonus structures when you're actually winning Grand Prix medals in these sports. So for them, they could be getting envelope A funding from US figure skating because they are the world champions. They could be getting additional funding for being world champions, potentially. I don't know what the structure is this year. They don't tell us, right? But it could be lucrative for them. And frankly, no one else is doing anything. This is almost like a very nice practice for them. Yeah. And what I what's interesting about it is they kind of know that. And not to say that they're shirking their responsibilities or like, oh my gosh, I can't believe you guys are doing this. But they seem to sort of be taking it in their own time and not worried about the overall image. They're just still doing what enough to win. Um, I thought their free had it more, the lifts looked more developed and more interesting here. And the choreography looked better than when we saw it at Skate America. I was more taken by it. Yeah, uh, the, yeah. the music for me is a miss in both programs in sort of the like unrelenting mood of it without it sort of like growing and building for me. Also, you know, I love uh, Mark Henready's commentary, especially on Ice Dance here. It was quite good. But I don't know if the ISU channel told him to fill it with more fluff and they gave him all this material because suddenly it became a lot about like backstory and all these sort of motivating factors. I want to know who wrote the media binder of notes on each point. Brandon is going to celebrate his 30th, his 30th birthday. Yeah. And a great season to do it in when he's, you know, well Yeah, champion. exactly. And so each one clearly had their like PR fluff that they wanted to be throwing in. Like toxic positivity, right? Yeah, a little, or just cheesy. I was like, Mark's above that. We were above that if we figured out how to watch this on YouTube. Like you could just keep it to the skating. But the one thing he kept saying about Alexa and Brandon was that this year that they're prioritizing their mental health over their competitive ambition and but it goes to the fact that we were saying earlier like oh they're on vacation oh look another vacation and they did show up and do their job but I wonder if that's part of their sort of pacing themselves to not get burnt out and I think it'll probably pay off beautifully for them you would have to because they had a long two years they got together during covid new team, competed the first year, it was chaotic with COVID. Then they went to the Olympics, they went up winning worlds, that changes your dynamic, right? That changes your life. And then they have to decide, do we do another year? And they have, it's a financial opportunity for them to do this. They yes. also potentially could be two-time world champions. Like, right. 
right? Now they're winning Grand Prix, which they had never done before. It's a completely new situation. They're the favorites every time they skate. And they are skating with more authority, right? They look more confident. They look, yes, they had some mistakes, but relatively, they skate just bigger than you they- know what's interesting is, Like you were talking about at sectionals, one of the interesting things is like, how much is on the line? Mm-hmm. And what's interesting is that in that scenario can draw out more exciting performances, but there's something nice about the performance quality here when actually, there's not so much on the line. It's not that if she botches one jump, they have lost a medal. She could botch two jumps clearly in the free and then still win. So I think it allowed probably her to be less a perfectionist knowing that good enough was going to get it, you know? Um, So there was a, a little bit more abandon and she kept fighting in that free skate. She didn't kind of go dark like she might have in the past or something about it. Um, It was nice to see. I personally just wish I loved the material a little bit more, but. I must say, I really like the Journey music. I wish that version that's used in Stranger Things had a little bit more melody at certain parts. Mm. Uh, I mean, his voice is obviously incredible. I love Journey. Um, But, and I think it's a really cool vibe for them. And I think it matches their skating well. Um, The Grey is not my personal favorite. Maybe they could get another set of. Uh, costumes just with more of a color like even more red and black would be great for it are you I talking think... about the short the, the... yeah yeah i think it's a cool had like a white circle on the front and the back that was almost too light in con it looked like he had a hole in his body i don't know if that was the goal i wasn't really following gray is not my favorite color for the ice especially if i just think it gives a weird energy that washes people out it's my personal yeah. opinion and Given the ice itself, yeah, of course. I, I don't know. I like gray as an accent on the ice, but I think that itself, it's I don't know. It's a weird energy to bring off yeah. a performance sport. Yeah. Um, but I think that the actual design is beautiful. So yeah, I don't know. Um, but I do think that they skated with a little more intangible something, even if the elements were good when they were against Deanna and Maxim. Yeah. And I would like this would have guessed this looked more like their first outing at a Grand Prix where like it was just a little bit clumsy at times and they were still sorting it out. They did seem a little bit more slick at the previous one, but like you said, more stiff competition could have done that for them. Yeah. Also, Trent Michaud won a competition with his new partner uh, at Skate Canada. So I do think we'll see some new pairs over the next year with some potential, but there is growth to be done. So I think it's going to take some time, but there is some hope. And I wonder, will Alexa and Brenda do one season? Will they do two seasons? Right. Right. Um, I think probably just this year, I believe Chris is a rink director in Chicago now from what was in an interview. So I don't know what's their dynamic. Are they training in there? Are they training in LA? Like who knows, but yeah, I think we're going to see them kick it into high gear. And yeah. that's certainly, there was nothing on the line for them here other than showing up and winning. They will absolutely, and wanting to improve themselves, but not the same excitement or pressure of going against a tough competitor. So I do think we will see better performances from them, from the Japanese, from Dieta and Max at the final. And it'll make the final. Have Interesting. A yeah. 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 At um, least for those top three spots. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to that. And Deanna, who didn't have their best competition at their second Grand Prix last week, we didn't, I didn't know that her grandmother had passed away right before. Oh, I didn't know that either. So I think it puts into context some of their performances. Of course it does. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I, I am, you know, intrigued for the discipline. Also, I don't know if you saw Mishnah Galyamov uh, in I Russia. Did. They skated well. And yes, I miss that level of competitiveness. I don't know if it were with Dr. Shevetsky or without as one, um, I wasn't there to take a urine sample. However, the Elvis program, Jonathan. Dave, well, at first it's confusing. So just to set the scene, he comes out in the brightest fire engine red I've ever seen. 
in like a onesie. And then she's in this very like elegant white fringe number from another program. Like it didn't, I, I wasn't understanding. And then the music starts so sweetly and yet he's already like in rock or Elvis mode, even though it does not match the music. And then whatever that acting was in the final pose, I was like, make it stop. However, those side-by-side -side jumps and the way that girl can land a throw is fabulous. Where they do lose me compared to some of the, the teams on the Grand Prix circuit is the quality of lifts. Their lifts kind of halt to a stop and are a little bit brief and clunky at times. But the jumping passes are amazing and the throws are incredible. But man, that Elvis program, I didn't know what was happening. That was tough. You're dead out about the lifts. Remember, the thing about the Russian lifts is that they are, sometimes they have more beautiful positions, but they don't go for the distance on the lifts. Yeah, it almost turned to a stop. Yeah. North American lifts, they really go for power, speed, distance across the ice. Maybe the positions are not always primary. Then you have Deanna and Max who kind of do both. So, the, yes, they do have a nice moment where she's doing a spiral and he's doing a hydro blade, but with those costumes and that music and that vibe. Yeah. It, it was very odd. It's not the way I want to remember tomorrow must be in like right. 40 right? The way I want to remember tomorrow must be is one of those like Russian figure skating pages <laughs> caught her with like a foam finger glove thing or something on. And it was just her at the boards like this. And just like the little hand waving from above. It was adorable. <laughs> and then in their free skate, they put him in tails. Mm -hmm. um, and the difficulty there is he has such a nice line. And when he's doing that back stretch thing before, it, it clouds his sort of like overall line, which is a real um, strength of theirs. So I don't know. It wasn't my favorite program. But again, like the the triple sow, triple sow combination and like his entrance and then into the triple toes, like, and her again, her throws. There were some world-class elements happening, but for sure, some odd choices choreographically also. I did want to say, I do think that Danny O'Shea has potential with this new partner. I think we'll, it'll take time, but they did, she is a new pair of skater, but looked strong. Although this is their first competition, you could see nerves and, you know, some unsteadiness, but they did have- And then getting used to someone else's nerves, you know, yeah. I mean, it's gotta be a new wild card in the- yeah. in the Paris element as well. But I mean, yeah, they had some nice moments. He landed his jump. She landed most of hers, you know. We'll see what happens. I mean, again, I was surprised that I was watching two throw doubles, but if that's where they're at, that's where they're at. And then I was curious, like, if you were new to pairs, would you be wanting to do doubles of the throws you will eventually do? Or would you rather just start with like a throw double axle? Or is it so different that they're like, why would we even hone that technique if that's not what we're going for in the triple? Well, you would potentially do like a throw double to warm up the throw triple rather than learn a different jump, Interest. right? Because yeah. okay. you're doing a throw double axle, you'd be going forwards on the entry right. potentially, right? Or yeah. depend the pattern's different. So I think for them, if they're, they don't have a lot of time, right? So yeah, I, I imagine- like, Let's just keep it simple and we'll grow into that eventually. Okay. It's like when we see the place card holder with triple sow or triple yeah. toe on its own in the beginning of the men's programs. I was always like, do you want to switch it out for another jump or are you keeping with the actual same entrance to, until you're ready? Then I guess that's what they're doing. Okay. Also in the ladies event at sectionals, Sonia Hilmer went from- having such a great season, and she just missed on getting out a bye to national That's great. Yeah. And she had never made it through sectionals before to go to nationals. And it was just like this skater who's had a wonderful season, who US figure skating suddenly got invested in, allegedly suggested that she change her program and music, did it, has like her original program and music hasn't ever. mastered hasn't skated as well since getting a new program losing that momentum didn't make it through to nationals she should have kept the same program i liked the other material they should have just given her a buy like who are we sending to some of these come if they sent her to Graz as an addition as well one as yeah that's where some things the other thing with the 
with the buys, they've been doing it and awarding buys so that if you have three international events, potentially you get to go with the buy or however many things because Brady's buy is like more questionable how they're making it happen you know when but she did have she has two grand prix so those are obviously bigger competitions however I don't believe that you should be able to get a buy because you went to a competition whether you were injured or untrained just survived and made it I, whether there is some sort of performance verification that you have to do if you're injured, but maybe you could submit a video and make it through the nationals that way. I don't know. There's like no perfect way of doing this right. because you do want to keep the more talented skaters in the event and go to nationals, right? right. I think there's always a debate of how many skaters do you have at nationals? Do you have 18? Do you have 24? What makes it more competitive? Obviously fighting to get there makes it competitive, but then if you have 24 versus 18 the skaters 19 through 24 wind up quitting or switching disciplines because they didn't right. make it or they switch countries because that does happen it's not when you're at the senior level if you're if you're like at all like if you're all if you're close to making it to nationals but you don't the way it, the world works now why are you going to stay in the u.s where you're not going to make it to nationals you could either right. switch or go to another country right Rather than not even go to your own nationals, why would you keep doing that? So it's a you, you. These are actually like important things because the quality of the field is going to determine how well the top people do. But right. I know Brady Tanell is coming back from an injury. However, she was not prepared for that. That was not the right person to send. I mean, and we've seen it before, unfortunately, where it's just like again, did someone monitor this? Like. Did they check in with how she was doing before she went? You know, it, it seems like she wasn't ready. And that's okay, because of course, she's coming off an injury. It's going to take time. But then why are we rushing it for this? And then like, is she even going to go to nationals if she's not more prepared, right? If she, It's almost like they should have to achieve a certain score at an international. Maybe you could make it fewer points than you'd have to get at a national competition where scores are often inflated. But I do think that there is a, some sort of minimum standard that a skater should have because we keep seeing these situations where skaters do go to competitions unprepared just to keep the buy going with the hope that with more time to train, they'll be ready for nationals. But things like this start happening. And I saw a bunch of skaters from the US who haven't looked great. Gabby Izzo hasn't looked up to her standard this season. Again, coming back from an injury needs more time, but we're sending people to the Grand Prix who don't look prepared. And it, it, it certainly isn't fair to skaters below them who have been skating right. relatively. Eva Ziegler didn't have a buy. She went to sectionals and actually earned it, but she also has had international competitions. Why wasn't she sent, right? It gets into these weird things that are going on. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. Uh, even to this Graz competition, I was surprised at some of the selections. I was disappointed that Gracie had gotten such a great response at Skate America. She's been training well, but she maybe felt more pressure, tired. I don't know, but it was concerning to see her slip back. Um, yeah. And again, it, it, even though there were errors earlier, the earlier kind of errors in the season were the, er the kind of errors that still showed you she was fighting, she was still on track, like it was just a whoops. But then with these pops and these sort of like moments, it, it sends a very different kind of message. Um, yeah, it, I mean, I've come to expect the up and down, but they are way up and way down, you know. Um, I just think it shows how mental this all is. And what kind of mental training are the skaters doing? I also think people talk about like sports psychologists in some situations when skaters have had deep trauma, what is the quality of therapy that they're getting? Yeah, this isn't whoops, she gets a little nervous because she's competing. There is a lot of backstory and a lot of history here and that needs to be dealt with maybe not by someone who's gonna give you pointers to not get nervous. This is like, needs a legit, 
sort of person to address and only then could you sort of think about competing and what the sports psychologist might be offering is sort of how I view it. I'll put it this way. I've done therapy for years. I think we've talked about it on the show. Yeah, the same. I got a somatic therapist who specializes in trauma. I started doing EMDR, I've done it for two months. How you view situations starts being different and how you view yourself and the change is relatively quick. Although it is a brutal process that leaves you like very tired and emotional for hours and you have to sleep and reset and it's not easy, right? But how you view the world and your brain actually starts healing itself. And for a lot of skaters who have traumatic backgrounds, I you have to wonder if like something like that could change their psychological thing. Gracie, more, than, more than someone trying to give them like a, a, a hint or a helpful tool to try to see it differently in the competition. If you don't address what that body is doing underneath all of that, it's not. So let me tell you, I have a tight peck here. I got an injury at a kid in a traumatic event. This is also where all of my attention goes. So like we study on this and putting pressure here. I've gone to physical therapy for this for four years and it never fixed itself, but like doing different techniques and doing different things is what's actually changed it. Yeah. Now I can turn my head that way when I couldn't before on the ice. So it's really like the, the book, The Body Keeps the Score is super- uh, oh, it's, it's an amazing book, yeah. Amazing book. And I really have found in my own life that I believe a lot of it. You know, like yeah. the, the evidence is certainly, um, and this EMGR thing, changes how you view situations. I mean, I've had like a couple of crazy scenarios in the, in the last couple of weeks, but like how you react to it changes. Right. You're able to be like, that's them. That's not me. Yeah. yeah. I had a friend do something really backstabbing and I was just like, eh, we're done. I didn't yell yeah. at them. I didn't get emotional. I was just like, we're done. Yeah. You know? And I would imagine if you, if one is competing and that body stuff starts to take over and remember something from before, it's going to throw everything into whack. Everything. How it not when you yeah. have lived with some of these skaters have? Right. With the coaching methods, with their parents being traumatic. Right. You know, Plus normal family, intergenerational traumatic events. So right. yes, I do think that this... Uh, if we could get the, a somatic therapist for the, on the national team to help uh, the different skaters, I, I do think it would be really fascinating to see what kind of results it yielded. Because yeah. think about Gracie, who's going out there with everything that she's fought through in her career. The mental part is so much harder than the physical part, right? Of and then course. yeah, go back to these events and having to do different things. And how long does that belief go? Because obviously Skate America, okay, that event has like the buzz for you, right? And it, it's exciting, she earned the spot, everyone was for her, right? right? It was, but then now you have to go forwards and do it again and this like pressure and things changing. So yeah, I think you just wonder that kind of scenario. Because we're also seeing Gabby Dalman, again, not- Roman Sadovsky. I mean, this was the quintessential case of something else has to be going on. You know, that quad saw was so reliable. One, the short program is a beautiful skater. The judges want to reward him. And then that free skate happened. And again, you know, this isn't necessarily about technique at the moment. You know, it's not like he has a wild quad saw and maybe it'll work, maybe it won't. His is really excellent. So when he starts missing and then the kinds of errors he was making in that program tells you he has left his body in that moment. Yes. And... Do you ever watch his vlogs? I have, I mean, we've covered a few, like I've seen a couple of them, yeah. He made one that he just posted right after the event. And it was interesting because four hours after a competition, when your program is what one could be considered a red wave, when you look yeah. at that box <laughs> on the top, the red wave, not in politics on Tuesday night, but yeah. in a free state when you see the boxes at the top yeah. of the yeah. That, that kind of red wave. Well, I don't think that that is the moment <laughs> when you've gone from being in first place to performing, you know, that poorly. Uh, and then the same, when you see someone, it's probably not the time to do an interview, right? Or to film right. a video. Right. Process, 
then let's 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 revisit. Yeah. But then also watching his event, watching re videos that he made after the Olympics and Worlds last season. It doesn't seem like he allows himself to really fully access what is going on. Mm. That's a protective thing, but then you start to see, but if you're not addressing what's going on, are you ever going to be able to fix it? Moving forward. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. yeah. There just seems to be a lack of clarity and emotional honesty about how he's feeling and what's happened. I could not imagine doing a video like that after having that many spills and that kind of an opportunity plus performance in the past. He seems like such an affable, nice guy, but he doesn't seem like his emotions don't seem to be always like meeting the moment, which seems to be a protective thing for being in a sport like this for so long. Well, and yeah. there's this there's this obsession with Gracie also, and even with these Roman things, the they demand fast perception on the moment. Like, yeah. oh, we did it the way I wanted, I'll get him next time. And it's like, you literally just got off the ice and everything just went to hell in a handbasket. Like, take a moment and be devastated. Feel that, like, do you know what I mean? Go through that, feel the things you need to feel, and then you can move forward and say you've learned from it. But a lot of these skaters in an interview, just seconds later are like, here are my positives though. And here's my takeaway and we'll get them next time. And it's like, whoa, have you sort of dealt with what just happened? So Lindsay Thorngren was on the ice. She went to Montclair right after she got back from Skate Canada, not the ice house, but she was able to, you know, maybe skate by herself. But it was on Halloween and the day right after she got back from Skate Canada. And Krista made an interesting comment. She said, I think that, Yes, there is the desire to train and fix whatever you did, but that, that time that you spend decompressing and processing and watching Netflix under the blanket in the dark with ice cream after you've done poorly, or if you did well and you just need time off, that is actually like a really important process for decompressing and processing what happened. Yes, yeah, yeah. I mean, I bombed sectionals last year. Okay. And I remember the hours after I was in no place to film a video. Okay. Right. And I'm not saying that this is right or wrong. I'm just saying it takes hours to process what happened to make a plan that this never happens again. Mm -hmm. What do you need to change and really look at the protocol, at your preparation, at your coaching situation, at everything going on in your life to kind of figure out like what is going on. Yeah. And for Roman, he's so talented. Uh, he looks incredible. like he loves to skate. Yeah. What is happening, right? Like what is going on mentally? What is going on in training? What's going on with the coach? There's clearly something there that they're not hitting in my opinion, just from seeing the way that this is, he's too good to be, doing this but then when you right. see his when you see his vlogs it doesn't look like he has that desire or that honesty to be like this is never happening again I'm never right. skating like that right and he does he doesn't seem to like allow himself to get that angry at himself at the situation I'm not saying beat yourself up but I'm saying like to get that resolute desire to, feelings to happen instead of again just quickly in a series of cliches moving past it before it you bomb on stage it, ha it must happen yeah. Now, right yeah do you know it when it's happening Wait. say it again you bombed like a performance before oh my god of course I, i'm wrecked for the whole the whole evening like mm -hmm. i have had one moment i mean where I like bailed on like the reception and the gala afterwards. I just like went home and mm -hmm. you're devastated. And for me, a lot of times it's about like waking up and resetting and trying again. But I have to, I used to be so quick to not dwell on it or get over it. But in order for me to get over it and actually make any sort of changes in a positive way, I had to like live in it and it sucks, but you have to like live in it for a while to understand what the hell just happened and what what you can do differently next time. Uh, and I, that was the thing, even with all these Gracie articles, I'm better now, I'm better now. I was like, there's not enough time to have passed 
to have processed really been just lived in that horrible ickiness for a little bit and figure out a way out that's best for you. Um, I, it's tough. And I, I would think knowing that this has been Roman's sort of MO, that he always has these sort of things at the ready because he has to send them a lot. A lot of times he's like poised for everything. And then this isn't like a Jeremy Abbott, like up and down. These again are like such extreme uh, sort of rough moments. It's really tough to watch. Cause again, you see from the human element, someone who's really going through it and not addressing or not, uh, not able to get raw about it or something. It was interesting because last year at sectionals, I had a protocol where, you know, I got, <laughs> The edge on the lats, you know, is that worth it? Got the I I toe waltzed, so it's like okay, we need to take this out because it didn't count in in bronze. They don't do IJS, right? And then my coach um, decided to do like the silent treatment games when they don't like how you perform and they don't respond. And knowing how they've reacted in the past or that they created a fight with me before the competition, which they think helps people when they're nervous, but that doesn't work for me. I knew in that moment, okay, you're fired. I need to change my combinations. Now I don't have a three jump combo. I'm going to have to like learn an Euler Sal, which I haven't done. And well, I, when I skated before I took my break, I did that about seven years ago. Well, I'll have to do that in three weeks and compete it and this and change this and like, look at the map. But for someone like Roman, like when you're that good, like I don't want to like, beat him up, but like, this is the time when you're that good because he's at like the peak ability of his career yeah. <laughs> like to skate well and win nationals and do things and he's really like risking like obsolescence when he yeah. skates like this like the time is there it's not the time to be like oh get him next time um no <laughs> like what are yeah, you doing there's nothing real to that you know what i mean yeah yeah and we know they're trained of course to be a little bit artificial in those sort of moments with the public, but like, give us something real, man, because we were all rooting also, for you. Why? why, though? Look, why yeah. are you, why in skating are you trained to say what you think people want to hear? Because I think people actually want to hear honesty. Yes, 100%. Um, actually, it's more frustrating to hear someone not being authentic in the moment right. and it becomes right. like a protective shield but i think it can hold people back but then also you don't want to be beat yourself up too much but there is a healthy level of honesty after the performance and it just seems strange but it it has happened several times throughout the season at neville horn he and his coach didn't seem to be reacting in the kiss and cry in a way that seem to match the performance yeah. that went on. Yeah. Especially when you're that good, right? It just is like a shell shock moment. So I think Michelle bombed what, like one and a half competitions and they had what, 75 fluff pieces on the fact that she had a couple of bad competitions in the spring of 1997. And boy, did right. we hear about it a million right. times. Right. right? So, and then Frank, who always lets you know, I mean, I remember him with Christopher Bowman in the kiss and cry moments. They just let you know exactly where they were. He's like, well, my coach is mad at me because he thinks I didn't practice enough, but I thought I just did pretty well. And then there's Frank like in the corner with his arms. <laughs> but that's real. That's what we're interested in. Yeah. We watched the competition. Like we're aware that something happened yeah. and, and, and your talent level. I mean, yeah. Daniel Grassel with the win then. Mm -hmm. What'd you think? Silly Evs with a, a, a silver. You know, I'm not always on the Dennis train, but this free skate was a moment for Dennis. I thought so too. I thought that Dennis carried it. Yeah. I put it just taste. Yeah. Um, what gave I that energy, gave that everything is on the line. This is the moment energy brought the house down. I struggle with Daniel Grossel skating. He seems like a nice person who loves to skate and is very talented. He's one of those He's people that's- willing to try. He seems willing to try to improve. I just- He's almost like too flexible. Like he's super flexible, 
but the flexibility doesn't equal beautiful positions, right? Yeah, the flexibility should only serve the purpose of making a beautiful position, and yet it doesn't seem to, yeah. Like, it seems like it's like overly Gumby and overly this. And to me, the pictures in Daniel's program and some of the technique on the jumps and the head in the air creates a really, like- And I'm sorry to be silly, but it's the color green of the shirt even. And yeah. it's so, it's so off-putting. Like there's two different costumes going on. It and the mask, But I'm like, mm-mm, mm-mm. To me, it's just like, a skater who's winning a Grand Prix, I just think there's a certain level of aesthetics and positions that is missing in his skating. But there is someone who clearly works very hard and has a desire to do it that I really respect. But yeah. I think it desperately needs to be cleaned up and there needs to be a ballet teacher and there needs to perhaps like rework some of the skating skills and the technique because he has a, a lot of great qualities. But it's if he wants to get higher he will have to improve these things because he's almost like one of those skaters that will do well because others falter and he does well enough. But I don't know if he's good enough to win or medal when everyone does well. Right. He has right. to capitalize on errors from others. And I think yeah. he actually has the talent to fix some of these things and win on his own merit. And so, even this, you know, I'm sure they try for the PR angle of like, oh, Jason Brown is working with him on this program and all that sort of stuff. But it was like, he doesn't need help with crafting a program. I mean, he needs someone with, with him in the rink every day, making that the priority. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah. Uh, Dennis, I thought was great here. I still don't care for the short program. It doesn't really do it for me. Um, but the free skate was exceptional. And it was exciting. And, you know, there may have been a call here or there and under rotation here and there, but the, he won the night. He got the crowd going. It was a great crowd in Sheffield. Like they were super enthusiastic and wonderful. Um, but yeah, uh, 100% a real moment for Dennis. And I haven't seen him deliver a real moment in a while. It was nice to see. No, the judges did place him first in components, according to skatingscores.com. And that is correct. That is 100% correct. His speed, the ice coverage, the attention to detail, the edge work, compare, especially compared to those around him. Because Shinsato is lovely, threw off some nice squads here and there, but, you know, it was sort of lacking. I just think the point differential between what Dennis did and what Daniel did should have been slightly greater. In because well, in, in PCS? Yeah, and maybe it wouldn't have made the difference overall, but I do think I do think that Dennis should have been rewarded more as something in the direction of the sport for presenting more of a cleaner, entire, more cohesive. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, and then it was interesting then as, as in the ladies event, looking at how closely they were doing that PCS, because, you know, I'm a big Mind Me Hara fan sentimentally oh, yeah. of all she's been through. Um, and la seeing her last year on the Grand Prix, I thought they did her dirty a couple times and she was skating really joyously and beautifully. Here, the material was kind of a little bit back to a more snoozy approach um, and the, the short program a little tight and the free skate just kind of lacking until the end, that joy that she can give. So it was interesting because Isabeau did perform more. And they did, I think, go with Isabeau on the PCS for the presentation. But it was in the skatingscores.com says that um, see, some judges, yes, for presentation, it most put Isabeau first. She got two seconds. Composition was split. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. It was five to four on composition. Skating skills, Isabel lost because she is yeah. slower. Yeah, and probably less ice coverage than my overall. But but Isabel, especially in the short, I think Isabel shorter is the stronger of the two programs. Um, the three is that music is endless. I'm it's sorry, just really, it, and it just monotones and it's not great. But the short is is well crafted, I think, and gives you the performance, has the energy. I was sort of surprised by the the short program results, but I think the overall result was correct. When Isabeau jumps, I really would like her to be a solo dancer because she has the most gorgeous spins. She yeah. has a nice look on the ice and if she could just focus on power 
and less on these jumps that look like they and would be gone. arms are so specific and so great in a lot of those choreographic moments. So we're going to cancel pairs until they rebuild it up, and we'll just put solo dance in, in place of it at some of these I'm competitions. Isabeau could be a world champion tomorrow in pairs. Like so Isabeau, Satoko, Mar and Honda. The Do solo it. dance competition. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Corey Cercelli will put in for the men. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. What are we going to do? But this is Roman Sadovsky. I was so just going to say, maybe Roman. Maybe Roman. Yeah. I'm tired. Okay. I'm tired of watching these performances. <laughs> I'm tired of the... This women's event was this the, was the generically happen. lovely championship. Yeah. They all skated well. I didn't know who bored me the most. I, 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 they, and it could have been, again, you almost wish Yalem had been here. Um, because even going in, I would have thought Young Yu had more of a chance than she did, obviously making a lot of falter, you know, faltering quite a bit. But also, again, in her presentation, back to sort of just the ugh, sleepy deepy, like. Also, the Gubanova program, I mean, it's. Kiana and Rockney did it in 2009. Yeah. Now with things about cultural appropriation and all the themes and the music that doesn't serve her, it's a strange choice. <laughs> yeah. have, and again, she's offering, delivering, she's delivering the elements, but they don't care. They don't, they do not go for it. Slumdog Millionaire for a Russian representing Georgia is just strange for me. I'm just- it May not be your first choice, yeah. That's my opinion, and I'm entitled to it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I thought Young Yu looked stronger in the free than we have seen in the past. And I didn't miss some of the big ticket items that we knew, the ultra C elements that we knew were going to be cheated. Right. So, right. but definitely still has more, you know, we knew that they were, you know, time off the ice over the summer injuries. I think um, I heard that she had lost her jumps at one point. I think more time to go. I don't know if this will be young youth season, but it seems to be at least climbing back a bit. Yeah. Again, the Korean skater that seems to be riding the wave of momentum is Yalem. Jonathan loves Yalem Kim the most. If you didn't but know. It was funny last season, they set up young you to sort of be that leading skater and really Yalem just came in stronger out the Jonathan, gate. Why don't you just say it? Yuna Kim ain't shit. Yilim Kim can do the real triple ups, triple toe. Just own it, okay? That's what you think, all right? <laughs> Yuna's was lovely also. Except I was always rooting for Mal. Oh, yes, you were. Well, you're a Mal fan. It's all yeah. over. Yeah. I'm one of the annoying people. I was always like, hmm, I like them both. I see pluses and minuses in both of their skating. But that was true. Again, an embarrassment of riches at that time. If we could combine them into one skater, it would be the most fabulous, right? If we could Alina have- Alina No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> we could have Mao's edge jumps and lovely knee with Yuna's arms and her- And uh, her height, yeah, I mean- right. And the toe jumps, we would have the greatest skater we have ever lived. I found it very lovely and satisfying to see them compete against one another. And I didn't really have an emotional investment. Although I thought that Mao tugged at your heartstrings more. Yeah, that's but, what it was for me. Yeah. Always. But the Mao Taras of the programs also mm, sometimes maybe want to run to the other room for a brief moment. Right. Love so them. I I'm, I'm in the minority. I love them? the Bells of Moscow. Yeah. Oh, no. I have grown to love the Bells of Moscow. Some of the costuming for masquerade waltz and that not my yes, favorite. Understood. Understood. Yeah. To was very the region at that time. Yeah. Yes. So yeah. I, yeah. And I gotta tell you, it was interesting to see like the dance event be like the rowdy go-to event of a Grand Prix. It was lovely. They were all in for for Lila and Lewis. Well, it was nice. I mean. They're doing the most this year. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Although he did have a fall and a choreographic twizzle. Uh, yeah. Which would be not the thing to do. But he has been so fabulous all season. We'll give and I think even without the fall, I, I, again, it was clear it was going to go. 
Italy, Great Britain, and Canada here. That was pretty awesome. okay. This is the strangest season of ice dance where none of the top teams seem to be clear front runners. I think it's Piper and Paul so far. I think so too. I'm worried the Italians on technique, but I'm thinking Piper and Paul have the Evita free dance is the free dance of the year, in my opinion. I think so. And I think it would just take like a small error from Chalk and Bates for the Italians to sneak in with their their technical scores and levels. Now, we know you love the Cana Danes because they are the prettiest. Don't you ask them? Yeah. <laughs> Le joie and la joie. Would you go with them? Are they technically better and have more long-term potential for development. Well, they certainly have the more long-term potential and there's a lot of great stuff going on. Something about it still strikes me as junior and I can't figure it out. Yes, we've talked about the material that the cha-cha slides a little like eye rolly and then certainly that the emo like profound lyric moment just sort of showcases where they may still grow in terms of extension and toe point and a couple of those moments. Um, but the Canada Danes seem to be scoring a lot better. Mm -hmm. And so even though Marjorie and Zach may have some finer skating skills in moments, I think it doesn't matter. You're gonna go with, who, with the aesthetic that's scoring the highest. And I think that's for sure the Canada Danes. Yeah. Yeah, I think there's no question. But I, I'm, what I'm curious about, does he go by Zach or Zachary? Zachary. Okay, Monsieur Laga, um, he seems very, angry and I think that's probably just how he's coming across or I hope that's just how he's coming across and the kiss and cry and after they skate and stuff but it's like an alarming energy for me as a fan it's it's a little disconcerting yeah <laughs> but um, yeah uh, but overall a good dance event I have to yeah. I, I'm I really enjoy watching all, all of the medalists yeah um now in Russia the women's I didn't event. watch any dance in Russia, but I did watch um, Elizabeth. Is it just that the programs, the lighting, the energy, dark, 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 uh, and sleepy? Like I, I wasn't. I'm not capturing the excitement that they seem to claim is always there. And I don't know if it's because they're oversaturating the market. Why did you have to do a, a counter Grand Prix event every time? Maybe consolidate up and do three or something. I mean, it's great that the Federation, I mean, all things considered, the Federation's job is to keep them going and, and that model does it, but it does seem like thinner crowds, thinner fields, less energy. It was it was tough. Elizabeth is short. Okay. She really sold it, you know, whatever it was. Um, and the long was obviously a miss for me, but throwing in those triple axles everywhere again, and then subsequently beating. Um, Plushenka's girl and a Terry's girl. So, yeah, Akatieva's free was such a mess. Oh. For me. Yeah, yeah. skating yeah. doesn't have the same quality. Everything was landed with like a heaviness. The vibe. And she was... used to be one of the few with that reliable triple axle because we know that school doesn't necessarily come out with many successful ones compared to their quads. But then suddenly, in the free for the axle to be all discombobulated along with the quads. It was, it showed that there was a lack of anything else really going on. Yeah. But it's, I, I agree with oversaturating the market. And a year ago, they were just telling us how much better they were, that uh, they had 20 people who could, you know, all do extremely well. The herd seems to have thinned down. Really has. Yeah. Remember what happened to that team after the Sochi Olympics when they all peaked at the same time? Right. Um, yeah. <laughs> all injured for like two years afterwards. Many retired. Yeah, and many tried to come back and couldn't. They, they were unable to with their bodies, yeah. Interesting, I'm seeing parallels. I don't... Just... But it was fascinating because over in the men's event, Kolyada gave us a beautiful short program, yes. only to muck it up in the, in the long. And then along comes Peter Gumenek, who I had not thought of more recently. Hello. Someone messaged me, the, you can say who you are in the comments because the DMs get flooded from week to week being like, how did you do the Opera Browser? Like, yeah. Someone compared me to Peter Gumenek and I was like. That's a compliment. 
Yeah. Like, I was like, aesthetically? I, he's handsome. They meant like in terms of the skating, like if I were oh. that. And I was like, well, not, not me. I think it's a compliment there. I was like, oh, hmm. I sort of see, kind of. Huh. Okay. He's got a nice line, you know, he's got a great- I've been scene. watching him more. I'll have to say, someone made a comment, just yeah. like that girl who did the extra practice, I'm now watching Peter Gomenic more. Okay? <laughs> I'm more invested. <laughs> I need to- yeah, Exactly, now that I'm- flattered or offended, right? I don't know. <laughs> You know what I am offended by? The Kolyada creepy tango from hell. I am sorry. Can we go back to the Nureyev program for like- What a waste uh, of his balletic ability. You know, how silly. To be honest, Opera Book is often a terrible choreographer, okay? Yeah, again, that seems like a gimmick for someone who can't do what Kolyada can do, but knowing what Kolyada can do, what are you doing? Why are you even wasting your time with that? But I prefer Medvedeva's 9-11 program to this creepy uh, Kolya Dalfrey, because at least it was horrible in a way that became campy. Yeah, right? and she believed in it. She believed in that 9-11 program. And she you know, did. almost Kolya Das, like I was told to do this. I mean, when the Twin Towers were falling during her footwork and she was answering the phone, not knowing if her husband, when she was 16 years old, was alive or dead, I was on board, okay? No. I was like- But she gave the suitcase too? Yeah. I didn't know what was happening, okay? This yeah. program, I have no interest and I just want it to be over. Yeah. And based on the way he performs his free, I think he might as well. So I, come on, he has to know good taste. I mean, there's no beautiful position for him to really strike in that program either. And again, you're dealing with someone who can hit the most gorgeous positions in all of men's skating at the moment. And it's like, hello. Although Avabuk himself didn't have the best programs. A Time for Peace. What was that free dance in 2003? Well, that's when Ice Dance was also referred to as like anything goes. I mean, I, I, you I remember I, a Time for Peace. It had a lift where she, Lobachova fell down his body like the second oh, time. Yeah. Very strange, okay. The poor man's um, Judy Bloomberg. Did you remember in the Scheherazade when she like slid down his body? That was amazing. That was awesome. They, you know, I like Klimova and Ponomarenko. Uh, however, I think that bronze medal was supposed to go to the US that year. Well, Jonathan, what was your moment of the week? Well, I have to say, I would like probably Dennis's program. I think that Dennis, I would have thought it was my winning because I have been rooting for her, but this wasn't like kind of the magic moment for me. It was really Dennis's free skate captured a really nice thing. And what I was doing during the in-between ice resurfacing, I'll show you my real moment of the week. You guys, I'm terrible. I put up my Christmas tree. Stop it. I was talking about you yesterday. <laughs> I'm listening. <laughs> Peter Grimmett, yes. I went into the country whimsy. You know, I like to buy my uh, ornaments. You know, we have a different aesthetic, but I appreciate your enthusiasm and love of the Christmas season. And I share that enthusiasm uh -huh, uh -huh. Season in a more Norman Rockwell-y kind of way. Ah, very uh, Americanish. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I, I, that's just, I don't know. I like to- I have a second tree that's all like woodland. It's all like woodland. Ooh. Ooh berries and like it's more natural it's the bush why don't we get to see that on facebook during the christmas season oh you see some of the ornaments you'll so, come to my holiday party and you'll see both you'll see both yeah oh, loving it'll be home. great yes it'll be great what are we what are we singing this year oh what aren't we singing this year today? can we have like a caroling moment can we some sort of yes, buzz and all sing i think that would be delightful yes i'd always get the fireplace going but it's too hot in here <laughs> oh I would yeah, you know, we'll do a we'll do a nice little Carol. I moment. want you and your friend Tammy to do baby it's cold outside. I mean that's just oh, what I do. That's one that has been all but eradicated. The the way that we have done it in the past is that I sing the traditionally female part. So it doesn't seem so law and order as for you. Say it again. Maybe it's cold outside canceled. Isn't it like maybe a little inappropriate? Yes, 1000%, because it's the guy being like, here, just have this drink, you can stay. And she's like, I'm trying to leave. And he's like, no, you're not, you're staying. Like, it's kind of a, ooh. <laughs> 1940s romance. Okay. In the context of the show, it is cute that it originates from, but the words out of context can read very questionable consent. Yeah, so there you have it. Things to learn in the skating lesson. Well, exactly. First moment of the week, Dennis Vasiliev, my moment of the week, 
U.S. sectionals. It gave us everything we wanted. Okay, Sheffield was dull. Was Sheffield. Yeah, welcome to Great Britain Grand Prix series. Yeah, okay. Welcome to Great Britain that isn't London. Well, now <laughs> I give you <laughs> watch Rylan Lukanen and Patrick O'Brien do their cha cha to waka waka. Okay, that was my jam. Okay, I was look it up right now. Yeah. He has hair like school picture day. She is bossing him around. Oh, perfect. Har heart winning with her arm going up. Oh, I loved it. Okay. This, I am, yeah. especially when you know the sectionals kids and the backstories. Oh, yes. It's where, the, it's where the real drama is. Okay. It's real, the real entertainment is. Okay. Even in the practice rings, half hours. A lot of followers. <laughs> <laughs> Bye now.